Good morning. We bump into lots of problems as we first observe how China has dominated entire supply chains for most industries in the world and how we consider how we might wrestle some of these industries back to our home markets. It's commonly known now that China has monopolistic control over the mining and the refining of rare earth elements, for example. And these are going to be crucial to build the technologies for the rest of this century. This is the reality right now, that it's Chinese, basically all of it. And Western governments and politicians have realized this problem and are now trying to set up domestic rare earth industries in North America and in Europe. Industry insiders, international business executives, and supply chain managers, we are almost uniformly pessimistic that there's much that we can do. The structural advantages for China are simply too large to be overcome from the very top on down. Diplomacy and government spending at the very top and the institutions that have been established all the way down, which is an entire industrial system that would need to be rebuilt in the United States. We're looking at universities today and how China has built a higher education system, how they've come from basically nowhere to lead the world in the fields that really matter, engineering and the hard sciences. The Shanghai Ranking publishes every year their global ranking of academic subjects. They rank global universities in 55 subjects in sciences, medicine, engineering, and social sciences. Over 1,900 global universities appear somewhere in their rankings. And the GRAS is designed to consider real-world applications and impact of the universities. Objective academic indicators, in their words, they count research output, how influential that research is, international collaboration, research quality, and academic awards. As we go through their data, let's consider what this means in real time right now, where the students are going to school, where those schools are, and how good those schools are. Because that's the talent that will be coming into the workforce over the next five years. Let's also consider for a non-Chinese, a European, or an African, or a kid from South America. And he's in high school now deciding where he's going to study. Also think about the families of those kids who are investing a lot of money and time for their kid to go abroad, and they want the best return on that money and time. Let's look for some good news first, such as it is. Here are the top 20 universities to study finance. Now for all these, we've got the top 20 universities and you can go through the rankings for yourselves on the link. In finance, the United States is eight of the top 10 and 16 of the top 20. And that stands to reason. The United States borrows and spends more money than any country in the galaxy. And that's what finance is. Law schools, the United States is 20 of the top 20 in law. We have more lawyers than the rest of the world combined, and so our best universities have entire departments dedicated to teaching us how to sue each other. Psychology and treatment of mental health issues is a giant industry in the United States, and so there are lots of American flags in the rankings for psychology. Rare earth mining is a combination of engineering and scientific disciplines. Industry experts refer to the fields as the three M's, mining and mineral engineering, metallurgical engineering, and material sciences. I'm gonna add two more, logistics and transportation because we need to get the ores from the mines to the refineries, and then from the refineries to the factories. And let's also include chemical engineering, which involve the processes of refining these ores. So these are five core disciplines that are required. And to build a mining industry, We'll need hundreds of thousands of engineers, experts at the top of these fields here to make it all go. Going back to the rankings to find these, here are the top 20 universities in the world for mining and mineral engineering. All we're doing is counting the flags. Australia has five of the top 20 spots. The US is at number 20. And Chinese universities are 14 of the top 20 in mining and minerals. Next up is metallurgy, eight of the top 10. Material science is next, and American schools show up in the top 10, but China's got half of the top 20. 
Here's transportation science and technology, logistics, moving stuff around. Finally, let's see chemical engineering. China's seven of the top 10 and 16 of the top 20. Looking through some of these other rankings, it's shocking to see where things are heading in the most important scientific fields. Instrument science, China is 19 of the top 20. This is the top 20 for telecommunications engineering. This one is for nanoscience and nanotechnology. This is all China, except for Georgia Tech at number 13. And Georgia Tech's top nanoscientist just left Tech and is now in Beijing. So look for Georgia Tech to not be there in the 2024 rankings for nanotechnology. Stanford and MIT don't even make the top 20. Nobody can touch us Americans in certain fields. If you want to be a tort lawyer or a trader on Wall Street or make movies for Pixar, or work with people with mental illnesses, we've got the schools for you, and you're crazy to consider going anywhere else. But if you're looking for the best places to study engineering, or energy, or logistics, or quantum computing, or nanotechnology, these are the rankings here that you're looking at. And let's remember again the smart kids from good families in South America, or Africa, or East Europe. Already, they're much more likely to be doing business with China than the United States anyway. China's their biggest trading partner. So where are those kids more likely to make valuable contacts which will be helpful to them in their careers when they return home to South America or Asia or Africa? Where are they much more likely to be in a class taught by professors and faculty with recent real world experience working in South America or Africa? And these Chinese universities cost about a tenth, 10% of what those families will need to go to Stanford or MIT or Michigan. So where do we think all those kids are going to go? This is Dali, Winam province. Be good. Everyone who hears these words of Jesus in exile is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew. And that house did not stand, for it was founded on the rock.